So what's up everybody, it's your boy student Dr. Malachi Wright and I'm back at you all with another video. Today, we have a pretty special video going on. We have student Dr. Jocelyn, Jocelyn, what's your last name? Walls. Walls, <laughs> student Dr. Jocelyn Walls. Introduce yourself, Jocelyn. Hello, my name is Jasmine Walls. I am a D1 here at the University of Maryland and I am a NHSC scholar and this is what brings me this interview about exactly <laughs> exactly exactly so you already know what we're getting into i'm providing you all with some great content from jocelyn about the nhsc scholarship for those who don't know this is a full scholarship a full ride scholarship to get you in or to dental school for zero cost right yep. you don't have to pay anything right nope um and they actually pay you while you're in school so that's about damn <laughs> You get paid while you're in the school? Um, yes, so the NHSC um, scholarship, you got to do um, either up to four years of service for um, four years being paid, well, they'll pay your tuition, and then you also get a stipend up right now. It's about like 1500 after taxes a month. And then at the beginning of each um, school year, they also give you like a cost of living expense fee thing, which is a few thousand dollars, which helps you with whatever bills you have. So it's a pretty great scholarship and um, anyone that gets it is very fortunate and lucky. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And you are one of those fortunate yeah. individuals to get that scholarship. And I'm super proud of Jocelyn for, for getting that scholarship. And she's going to be telling, telling you all about all this great information, information about this scholarship too. So if you haven't done so already, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and share this video with a friend. You never know what type of content they may need. You might change your life. You never know. All right, so let's get into this video, shall we? The first question I have for you here. How did you find out about this scholarship, this NHAC scholarship? Um, well, obviously, after getting accepted into dental school and seeing the cost of it, I was like, okay, well, how am I going to pay for this? And um, Feel that. I, loans was, once I seen the loan amount and all that, I was like, there got to be something out there. So I just started looking around the internet. YouTube is a great source. Um, Dr. Jordan Brown, this is free promo. Um, he's a great, he sent me a handbook about everything NHSC for free. Um, so if you see him on Instagram or YouTube, I would definitely check out his information because he helped me um, navigate this whole process. And um, You know what's so funny about that? What? Dr. Jordan Brown actually read my personal statement. What? Yeah, yeah he's great. <laughs> he edited my personal statement. So she's not lying about that. He's a great individual. He has, he's big on Instagram, social media, all those different things. But yeah, check those those resources out to find out yeah. a little more about the scholarship. So like, when is the timeline for applying? Like, I know a lot of students, they think, okay, well, if I'm interested in this scholarship, right, I want to apply for this scholarship. Like, when should they look for the application? Like, where okay. should they look? All that good old stuff. Well, um, so you have to have a uh, acceptance letter from a dental school. So that's going to be like December 15th, if you're lucky. And then maybe, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and then after that, I mean, once you get one, you can apply and the cycle opens eight, late April or mid April and then closes um, sometime in March. So you only have like a two to three week window to put your application in. So it's good to have everything that you need ready. Because once that application um, portal opens, um, it'll pull it before you know it, before your recommendation letter comes back and all that, it'll be closed. So make sure to get that in. So you need like recommendation letters. Do you need to like write out like an essay or something? Um, yeah, so two recommendation letters, um, one from a academic um, professor and then one from someone you know. Can't be like family or friends, so Dang I it. chose... <laughs> Yeah, I chose to do a hygienist that I worked with um, and then a science anatomy professor. So, um, and then you need to do an essay, um, 500 words or less. Um, this year, they only had one essay question. In previous years, it used to be three. And you don't know what the essay question is, so you can't pre-write your essay. Um, but you could kind of have a general idea about things that you want to talk about. Um, and usually the questions are geared towards, like, how can you impact the underserved community and what it means to you type of vibe so just having a general idea of your morals and your um mission will help you create it and it, it should be okay got you got so. you got you so quick question so for those students who are like thinking about applying like say if they go get the recommendation letters all that good old stuff what is like the requirements for the scholarship like do you need a certain gpa requirement do you need like a service obligation like what does that look like um, I can't recall. I'm sorry that I don't know the direct answer, but they do ask. Um, I know it's definitely essay. Um, you need to have a acceptance letter and then your recommendation letters. Um, GPA probably plays a good role in seeing if you're good academically because obviously they're paying for you to go to school and they want to make sure you're going to succeed. So if you have a poor GPA, I'm not sure how that will play out for you, but um, you can upload a resume with all your things such as um, GPA, um, 
okay. courses that you took, your DAT, just to show them that you're a well-rounded individual. But I don't think it's like a make or break type of situation if you're on the lower end, like a 3.0 versus a 4.0. They really don't care about academics. They want to see you as a person and what you can provide for the people that you're going to be serving. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. You know, make sure if you haven't done so already to check out my videos on writing like essays and personal statements. Yeah, there's some great content there as well to help you kind of scaffold your stuff. For many of you all who do know, I, I do work as a consultant professionally for medical students, pre-med students, pre-dental students, students trying to get into residency, all that good stuff. So I, I kind of know a little bit what I'm talking about, I think. <laughs> but uh, moving on to my next question here. So how long is the duration of the scholarship? Is it for like one year or is it for all the years that you're going to be in school? Um, so you can get up to all four years or you could do a three-year commitment and they'll pay three years of school or a two-year commitment and they'll pay two years. Um, but even if you choose only to do, um, so it's a minimum of two years that you have to serve in. Even if you do that, I don't know how to like how I'm trying to word it, but I'm trying to think. So some people choose the one year for them to pay for one year, but they mm -hmm. still have to do a two-year commitment. So uh, that doesn't even make no sense. So nobody yeah. really chooses that option. So it's best to go three years, or four years, or um, two years for two years. So, so it's like two years right off the bat like if you get yeah. a scholarship whatsoever and you then have like two years commitment to them and then after that if you go any like you always have to do a two-year commitment and you could choose for one year of school to be paid why would you do two years commitment yeah and yeah that makes sense yeah so Jason, tell me a little bit about the timeline that we have for the NHIC scholarship. Like, what does that look like? How long am I going to be waiting to, to know if I got the scholarship or not? Okay, so I sent my application in um, early April and then I waited the entire spring and summer and didn't hear back until about September 30th, that's the deadline. So it is a waiting game to find out and then once you do, they're like asking for a bunch of requirements. Um, they need stuff from the school and verification letters and all this stuff. But um, after that, you should be pretty much set to go um, October. So it is important to still fill out your FAFSA because in that school is already starting before you receive any aid from them. That's crazy. So yeah, it kind of sucks. It's like. So we're in the spring semester and they just paid my fall semester so you kind of are a little bit behind communication is a little bit crazy but you kind of have to think like this is a huge program you're competing with you're in it with med students PA students so they do have a lot on their hands so just be patient um and understand that you will be waiting a lot communicating with financial aid um, services at your school and talking to people at um the nhsc so Got you. Yeah. So you gotta be you gotta be patient. Like many things with with dental school, you have to be patient. Take your time and make sure that you stay on top of your stuff. Stay in contact yeah. with people if you need if you have questions or anything like that. Yeah. All right, moving on to my next question here. So tell me a little bit about for those who are interested in like specializing after dental school, even for yourself, if you're interested in specializing after dental school, what does that look like for somebody who has an NHSC scholarship? Um, so you can specialize. Um, it, there's just only certain specialties. So I know pediatrics is one of them. Um, I don't. That one. What? You don't like that one? <laughs> I'm thinking about that pediatrics, so listen. But yeah, so they will um, allow you to do that. You'll just have to kind of put your other commitment on hold while you're doing that. I'm not sure if they'll pay for it. I haven't looked that far ahead just because life is life in. But yeah. um, there's definitely resources, and they have it all in their handbook, how that works out. So I we can link the handbook and definitely. all the resources for the NHSC um, scholarship. Because I'm still new to this, but um, I think it's a great opportunity. I'm ready for whatever it brings. Of course, of course. And look, we're about to wrap this video up, and I just want to ask Jessalyn if there's any last piece of advice for any pre dental students or general students currently who are thinking about applying for the NHSC scholarship, what would you give them? Um, make sure this is something that you absolutely want to do. Don't go into it for the money. Um, they try to weed those people out anyways during the application process because it's not about the money, and if that's your sole purpose, I feel like this is not going to be a good opportunity for you because you're going to be working in either a rural area um, serving underserved communities and they can kind of get that vibe that if you want to be there or not and your mission has to be like your heart has to be there with it so please don't do this opportunity just for the money um, it's great that they're allowed it's obviously there because there's a need um, so it kind of puts into perspective like why is this even a thing so clearly there are people that are not having access to health care and um, if you want to be a part of that mission please apply it is a competitive process but you never know until you try i just was like no, right. i'm gonna try and here i am that's right and it was great well, look, I appreciate your time today, Jocelyn. I truly appreciate the work that you're doing also in the community. I thank you for making sure that you're doing this for the right reasons, obviously, and giving back to those people who, you know, 
or in your community. Yeah. And, and you know me, I'm big on community. So that's one of the things that I hold to a, a high standard in my life. So if you have done so already, thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for your yeah. time again today, Jocelyn. And I'll see you all in the next video. All right. Peace. Time to go laugh.